Fox, no surprise there. The matchups are interesting. Here's a big one, thrust on McDonald. And McDonald loses the ball to Boo Harvey. Harvey to Brust. And a foul is called, and Brust will quickly go to the line for two. When St. John's was blown out by DePaul on Saturday, they fell behind 14-2. to two. I can tell you, Bruce, no matter how long you coach, and Luke Karnasek has been at this longer than most, and more successfully than most, the beginning of the game is nervous nilly time. You just want to see that ball go in the basket for you early. You have nightmares that you're going to get shut out. Matt Brust with the first point of the ball game. Junior from Babylon, New York, North Carolina transfer. Let's talk about matchups here up front while we have a chance. The Matt Bruss matchup on McDonald is key for St. John's. We're going to get a lane violation there, and they'll shoot it again. I would think the key matchup for Georgetown, although Thompson will change defenses a lot, will be who do they put on Porter and whom do they put on Sheldon Jones inside. So Bruss will get another opportunity on the violation against the Hoyas. And he does not capitalize. Charles Smith streaks up court for Georgetown. Smith with the floater. Hilton Jones clears for the Redneck. Michael Porter, who had only three points and three turnovers in 39 minutes last time out against the ball. Porter penetrates. Blocked by Tillman. That hasn't happened much. That was a great defensive play by Tillman. Shelton Jones got caught up in the air. Here's Boo Harvey. He fires. He hits. Three nothing Redmen. Tillman fouled by Michael Porter. You can pick up trends even in a minute and ten seconds. And one thing that is obvious is that the Hoyas are really going to work hard to push the ball up the floor and to try to get instant offense in the corners out of Tillman in particular with that three-pointer. He loves the left corner. The other thing it does for him is they flatten out and they isolate Charles Smith. There's Tillman from the right side and he gets it. Tillman gets the Hoyas on the board. Jaron Jackson replaces Highsmith in that Georgetown lineup. Harvey breaks the press. Off to Michael Porter. He gets way up and lays it in. St. John's 5-2. Jackson. McDonald. Here's Smith working against Harvey. Good matchup. Guillory. And he puts it in. And Guillory won't score much, but there's a, a nice hoop. Well, Guillory's got very soft hands and a nice touch. He just really lacks experience and stamina. But Georgetown's gotten quality minutes out of Guillory in the last three or four weeks. Georgetown 7-5 and five on the road. St. John's 10 and 5 at home, including 3 and 2 at the Garden. Smith throws it to Shelton Jones. And a loose ball picked up by McDonald. Here's Smith. Jaron Jackson leads it in. And the Hoy is pushing the ball impressively thus far. And very deliberately so. Perry McDonald and Mark Tillman in particular are really sprinting the floor. And it's, it's difficult to contain Smith in that transition game. He's very dangerous. Harvey watched by Smith. So each player has the assignment of the offensive and defensive end. Smith has carried such an offensive load for Georgetown, Bruce. It's hard to, to remember, but he was a defensive specialist and recruited as such by Thompson. He puts it away there. Darren Jackson leads ahead to Tillman. And a whistle before steps called on Mark Tillman. You have a feeling that the Redmen haven't gotten into as much of their rhythm as they want yet as compared to Georgetown, who has established their running transition game. Russ, long lead pass to Shelton Jones, like a wide receiver. He backs in. And a rebound to Guillory. Good clean box out. Guillory's been a factor twice defensively when it's isolated. Steps called on Jaron Jackson as he made a move to the basket. Four turnovers, Georgetown, two St. John's here in the early going. And now Dwayne Bryant reports for the Hoyas, replacing Mark Tillman. If you're a fan watching at home, you want to put your coaching hat on. One of the decisions Karnaseka has to make is do they attack the press to score? Thus far, they have made that decision to attack to score. Charles Smith off the turnover to McDonald. 
he hits it. So the Hoyas lead by a score of eight to five. Six straight points for Georgetown. Michael Porter outside to Boo Harvey. Backcourt brought by way of San Jacinto Junior College. And what a career they had there. Porter fires. Got it. Good screen by Williams. Look at the ball being pushed up. Smith wasting no time off to Dwayne Bryant. Very good ball handler. Steadying influence for the Hoyas. Maybe their best playmaker. Smith loses the ball. And a foul is called a hack on St. John's. And there's a timeout on the floor. The Hoyas lead by one. 16 minutes to go. First half. I, th I think they're going to stay because it's a shooting foul. My wife said, honey, Piedmont spares are so low. Why don't you take me along on your next fishing trip? I said, I know. Well, the, the rules call for on the, on the TV timeout. If there's not a shooting foul involved, they'll go. And I think the original thought was that maybe the referee had called a foul when he was on the floor, but he was in the act. And Burr got it for shooting. And so now, having made the second one, they will now go to a TV timeout. All right, so we apologize for the inconvenience, but you didn't miss any action as Smith hits both the play, Bruce Beck, Dave Gavitt, Madison Square Garden in New York City. And the Hoyas with that three-point advantage. Dave, you go back to some of the classic meetings between these two teams. And you have to remember the year 84-85, the year that... St. John's went to the Final Four, and Georgetown went to the championship game. They met four times that year. Hoyas won three of them. That, that, I mean, there were some games that year. They were ranked 1-2 in some order all year long, and each time they played, it seemed like the theater got bigger. But I think that, interestingly, these two teams have had a lot of success beating each other on the other guy's court. Uh, I don't know this for a fact, but I would suspect that St. John's has probably beaten... The Hoyas in Landover more than anyone has, and the Hoyas have won some big ball games here in Madison Square Garden. Well, I can substantiate it for you. The Hoyas have lost 12 at the Capitol Center since they started playing there. St. John's has beaten them five times. Good double team inside. Jason Williams in the game for the Redmen, and he just misses it. Tillman has the rebound. Meanwhile, at the Garden, Georgetown leads 5-3. So you're right. Visiting floor hasn't meant much. Mark Tillman proves it as he buries a three-pointer. And again, it's that transition, what you call secondary fast break. You don't have them outnumbered, but you've got to find the shooters quickly. And the shooters for the Hoyas are clearly 20, Tillman, and 13, Charles Smith. Those are the two real dangerous outside people. Hoyas lead it by six, shooting very well from the field. Who Harvey penetrates. Rebound to Jason Williams. He hits. He is not afraid to put it up, in traffic or not. Tillman wide open. They missed him that time. Left corner. They get him now. Sharon Jackson, Bobby Winston in the ball game for the Hoyas. Beautiful feed to Jackson from Dwayne Bryant. Sheldon Jones is a guy that got picked off on that play, Bruce, but it was Williams that didn't give room for the defense to slide through. Freshman mistake. Georgetown six for seven from the field to start this game blazing. 15-9 Hoyas, 14-30 first half. And Michael Porter with an offensive foul. Good defense by Tillman. He anticipated to clear it outside and really sort of guessed a little bit that the drive was going to go baseline, and he was there. Jonathan Edwards in there for Georgetown. And there's the shooting thus far, as you can see. St. John's not doing too bad. Yeah, but, but they're not in their rhythm yet, and I credit the Hoyas with, with disturbing some of that because they've really had good double-team pressure on the ball. Bryant off to Tillman. Jaron Jackson to Edwards. Good ball movement, but they threw it away to Matt Brush. Harvey. I wanted to have five guys to defend you on one 30-second possession for my livelihood. Number 23 in the white would be on my team, Bruss. Jason Williams feeds off to Boo Harvey, who hits the J. That is St. John's basketball. For the first possession of the game, really, they really got into their rhythm, got the open man, kept it ahead of the double team. Tillman dumps to Edwards, returns to Tillman. He misses the layup. Jones clears the board. 
Here's Michael Porter. Airborne. He hits it in a foul on Tillman. And Porter was way up there in the stratosphere. Porter's got an NBA jump shot, Bruce. I mean, you sit here in Madison Square Garden and see a lot of game. Watch the quick elevation on this shot. And even though he gets good contact from Tillman, he's strong enough to ride up through and still give it the soft touch. He's got a Dave thing like jump. I'm just so impressed with how quickly he accelerates and how high he accelerates. When you watch the great shooters in the NBA, they all have two things in common. If they shoot it off the move, that's one. Quick stop acceleration. The second is the strength to ride through contact. Lucarna Seca has some words for Matt Thrust. Porter looking for the three-point play. Five in a row for St. John's. They cut the lead to one. Georgetown has, has, has succeeded in getting St. John's defense spread out a little bit. And it happened there with Winston. They, Louis wants them more compact than they are. But Georgetown has a way of doing that to you. They've got such excellent quickness in ball handling that they'll spread you out and then penetrate by you. First bucket for Bobby Winston. Boyas look crisp on offense. Porter penetrates. Loses the ball. Charles Smith, three on two. Smith stops and pops. Rebound Brush. Back the other way we go in transition. Porter. Darren Jackson and the tempo quickens. Smith to Dwayne Bryant. Plays it in. I thought the, I thought the Milrose games were two weeks ago. That was, that was quick transition indeed. Hey, Dave, St. John's doesn't want to get caught up in that type of running game, do they? No. Time. Not Here by the Hoyas. Jason Williams helping out for St. John's. Hoyas 19, Redmond 14. 12.30 to go, first half of play. Man defense by Georgetown. They'll double team on the sides out of it. Disguise it very well. You've got to get rid of the ball before the trap happens. Serena, pretty dish inside to Shelton Jones, who is fouled. And Serena with the nice bounce pass. A lost art. Fans watching at home, I think, can, you know, see the disguise defense. It starts out man-to-man -man for Georgetown. The ball goes to the side, and then they double-team it. That time, they broke it to Sharina, who fed down inside. The key to attacking that is you've got to read the trap coming and get rid of the ball before it hits to the middle, and then you go weak side, and you've got the defense two-on-one on, on the weak side of the court. Foul is on Highsmith as Jones hits the first free throw. Shelton leading the team in scoring and rebounding, and he's been consistent. I think he's had a very good year, and you see Shelton with the protective goggles. I mean, he had a very scary injury last summer, detached retina while he was with the NIT All-Stars over in Europe and had to re and required surgery later on. And I think Shelton Jones has really matured into the kind of senior leadership you always expect to see from St. John's and from from Georgetown players. Now we're seeing a 2-3 zone. From the, from the Redmen for the first time. Dwayne Bryant out to Charles Smith, back to Bryant, thought about the jumper. This Smith should sets up. This should help St. John's a little bit on the board. I think Louis going to this to keep his defense more intact, more compact as we talked about the Hoyas spreading them out. You better know where 13 is in this defense. It's on the, top right on now. the baseline, yeah. missing the J, picked off by Porter. Well, the first trip with the zone, not bad for St. John's. You don't see much of 2-3 from St. John's. And now Thompson's going to retaliate. He comes off the man-to-man. -man. He goes 2-3 zone. Again, be careful. The trap's on the side. There it is. Thrust, Porter, Williams. And a blocking foul called underneath on Edwards. And you want to know how effective the assistant coaches are in scouting, Bruce. We'll talk about that when we come off this break, but as soon as they called the defense, St. John's bench was up calling the offense. Thus far, the Redmond 55%. Good balance of the part of Georgetown with six players on the scoreboard, seven players on the board, and the Redmen led by Michael Porter with seven. Bruce, you asked me a good question before the game about cold shooting from St. John's. You just have to go to your defense. Georgetown went through that in January. They had three or four games in a row where they shot under 35%. And McDonald really worked himself out of a slump. Williams off balance. And a foul is called, and Williams will go to the line for two. It's on Highsmith. That is the fifth team foul on Georgetown. St. John's is three. Ronnie Highsmith with a foul. Jason Williams, his first competitive year at St. John's. 
he's a he's really a fine looking prospect six foot nine 200 plus pounds he is probably going to get better and better as he plays next year I think when you've sat out a year with no competition that first year back is tough it's very different from playing pickup games. That's right. Jason Williams, a prop 48 casualty a year ago. Now, Ben Guillory reports back in for the Hoyas, replacing Highsmith, who lives with two fouls. Redmond staying 2-3 zone. And again, the key people for them to try to key on, Charles Smith, Mark Tillman. Those are Georgetown's two real good outside shooters. And you always need to know where Perry McDonald is, particularly on the baseline and when the ball goes up on the board he's very dangerous on the offensive glass smith out to guillory here's tillman penetrating back to smith he fires for three he hits it you just have to match up with him if he's in your area you almost have to come from the zone and play him man to man with that full court pressure quarter three on one if he hurries jones and smith comes up with the rebound here's smith quickly to the front court five on two Winston holds up. Smith gets the ball from the backcourt to the front court as quickly as anyone in the league. Boyers lead it by five. If you remember the Georgetown at Syracuse game in the Carrier Dome, he took it the length of the court, Charles Smith. Six seconds to go. Threw up an unbelievable underhand shot that went in for a one-point victory. Go, 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 go. Shot clock down to 15. Tillman right wing. Smith on the top. Those are the dangers. Here's Smith got for play. three. Got it again. Charles Smith, who has 39 now on the season, and the Hoyas open up by eight. Harvey, three on one. Lead for Jones. And a foul is called. And that is the second time St. John's had the three on one, but didn't really capitalize. I think St. John's has had about five opportunities in this game where they've come through the press and have had Georgetown outnumbered. Here's one of them clear three on one but look at the blue shirts hustle back they don't make it easy for you their retreat speed is great and st john's has really you know they could probably be ahead in this game had they converted those transition hoops foul was on guillory his first 16 foul on the hoyas with 942 to go in the first half shelton jones for a deuce I'm going to be interested to see, Bruce, whether Louis comes out of the zone now. He's been hit twice by Charles Smith with the threes. I think the zone's not a bad idea. It's compact, but he's but he's a little uh, nervous about Harvey finding Smith in that in that elbow on the top. Yes, indeed, he's gone man again. Jones with four points off the line, four for four. Louis's a man-to-man -man guy, you know, and I think the assistants work on him. They try to get him to go a little zone. But if you hit a couple of threes on him, uh -huh. he's back to what he knows the best, and that's man-to-man, -man. eyeball to eyeball. Good foresight, Dave. <laughs> I think you've hung around, Louis, for too long. Again, the problem in trying to defense the Hoyas man-to-man is that they really play with four guards in the center, and the matchups are tough. So you go back to man, and he burns you that way. Action side. I mean, what a year he's having. Absolutely a great year. Oh, is by eight. Porter taken away by Winston. Here's Smith. Four on three if he hurries. McDonald. Rebound Tillman. Rejected by Jones. Tillman again. And the Hoyas out hustle St. John's for the ball. Pretty good defensive stand by St. John's right there, though. They knocked away two. Winston looking inside. See, here's a tough matchup. Shelton Jones on Winston. Winston's a guard. Porter knocks it away. Goodbye. They won't catch him. And he lays it in. 27-21 Georgetown. 8.20 to go first half. Interesting game. We're coming up on eight minutes. If you didn't have a scoreboard, Bruce, you'd have to say Georgetown clearly has been dominant in this game to this point in establishing what they want to do, and yet there's St. John's down six. Tillman penetrates, loses the ball, but a foul is called from behind. It's on Matt Brust. Matt Brust is one of the few non-big guys that if he's in the area, he always gets charged with the foul. Some of that's that determined look on his face. I mean, he is a competitive guy. He's usually doing something, too. 
Oh, he's tough. I mean, he just he just comes to play it. P.J. Carlissimo, the Seton Hall coach, was the coach of the Big East team that went down to Australia down under last year for seven-game tour. Matty Bruss was on that tree. He said the Aussies loved him. He was in the stand. He was on the floor. Here's Tillman at the line. A Big East all-freshman selection a year ago has improved his scoring this year by three and a half points. Mark Tillman's having a good year. He's really, you know, he's an enigma to me because he's such an outstanding shooter, and yet he struggles from the foul line. Johnny Jones replacing Bobby Winston for the Hoyas. Tillman hits the second free throw, and the Hoyas lead it by seven with 7.59 to go in the first half. Back after these words, and sharp and they play with good intensity defensively. Okay, here's that defense we talked about before. It shows 2-3 zone, you can see it. Now watch what happens when the ball goes to the wing. Double team comes. And a not, foul call. Not time to get a foul port or wiggle out of it. But the double team will come and then the opposite point man on the front will rotate out to steal. The guy that receives the ball has to make a very quick pass to the post, right in the high pivot area and then that man will have two on one on the weak side of the court. But they are so quick at getting into a Georgetown and they disguise it so well that it's a very difficult defense to deal with. Michael Porter hits the front end of the one and one. The Hoyas are over the limit with 7.40 to go in the half. Charles Smith charged with the personal, his first. Redmond have 14 fouls. St. John's a very good free throw shooting team, 73% overall. Bruce, I'm going to be interested to see the contribution that the Johnnies may be able to get out of Baldi. They, they really need for Marco Baldi to, to be a contributor down the stretch in this season. Baldi on the floor for the Red Men. Johnny Jones to Charles Smith against Boo Harvey. He has had the best of that matchup thus far. Guillory. Darren Jackson. Oh, is working the ball. Not much penetration here. 12 seconds of the shot clock. 10. Now they'll flatten out, and Smith will try to go. Here goes Smith against Harvey. Johnny Jones, three seconds of the shot clock. They won't get off a shot. And the Redmen have the ball anyway. Jones to Harvey. Dishes to Brush. And he gets it, and a foul. Brush to the basket, strong. Road through, he'll get a chance for a three-pointer. Sheldon dishes, now Harvey very unselfishly on the glide, picks up the trailer, there's the foul, Bruss rides through it. Good trip for the Redmen, both ends. They played 45 seconds of defense and then scored in the transition. Dwayne Bryant in for the Hoyas, replacing Johnny Jones. Bruss looking for the three-point play. St. John's within two. Five straight for the Redmen. The Johnnies punched through that tough period of the game, they hung when they were really not into their rhythm, and now they're playing. Darren Jackson to McDonald. St. John's playing well in the man. Bryant, rebounded by Marco Baldi. Here's Porter to Harvey. And a whistle, an offensive foul on Boo Harvey. No basket, no goaltending. Offensive foul, Harvey second. Okay, here it comes. I always watch to see if the referee's in position. Burr was. He thought it was a charge. There's a lot of people here rooting for St. John's that didn't agree. Yeah, I would think it's a partisan house. Hoyas by two, 6.20 to go. Well played first half. Jackson to McDonald. Smith backs in on Steve Serena. Dwayne Bryant. Jackson. And the Hoyas have gone cold. Here's Porter. Got it! That's his game. That's where he's tough. Thompson wants to talk now, but he wants Bryant to go over the 10-second line. And now he wants to try to take the crowd. He does this very well. To bring the ball out when the crowd is at its most intense and just make you play defense for a while. Then the crowd loses interest because they like offense. McDonald inside. Ooh, a tough hoop for McDonald in traffic. It was a tough hoop, and Brust has done a good job on him in the first 15 minutes of this game, Bruce, of not letting him get the ball. 
in that position. When Perry McDonald gets the ball in the lane, it's over. He's very tough on the on the offensive move. Boy is by two. 5.15 to go first half. Jones tied at 30. Good shooting by St. John's now. I look for the Hoyas to try to put the ball in Charles Smith's hands this trip. He's got Steve Serena on the matchup, and Steve gives up a lot of speed and quickness in trying to cover Smitty. McDonald. And Baldy fighting with it with Guillory. It's last touch by Baldy. Georgetown ball. Winston replaces McDonald in the Hoya lineup. And Mark Tillman checks back in. And he replaces Jaron Jackson. Russ may be a little tired right now. He has had a he's had his hands full. Perry McDonald. Not an easy man to guard. McDonald's out. Now he's picked up Tillman. That's no bargain either. The way Georgetown plays, they spread the floor and they move well about the ball. So They've had Brust on the move the whole night. Smith fired. And a rebound to Tillman. Just a little tired, Matty, I think. But he'll punch through it <laughs> if you know him. Kids call him Rambo. Smith off the pick. Tillman takes Brust to the hoop. Tillman and Jones wrestle for it. Hell ball, arrow points to St. John. And again, you saw Bruss get beat on the offensive board that time by Mark Tillman. That just doesn't happen to, to, to Matty Bruss that much. Harvey back in, replacing Serena. St. John's going with Harvey Porter, Bruss, Baldy, and Jones. Players have made only one of their last nine. I credit St. John's defense. It's picked up. Here's the trap on the side. Here's Jones underneath. And he lays it in, and he gets a little help from the rim. And St. John's doing a better job of Reed now, and they went straight across that time. Look for Georgetown to change the defense again. St. John's in front, 32 to 30. That's their first lead since early on. Since 5-2. Winston off to Tillman. Motion without the ball for the Hoyas. I was just thinking that they always move without that ball. Smith on the floater. So tough on the penetration. And what sets that up is the motion without the ball. They get the defense all spread out, and then Smith reads it and penetrates, and there's no help. Smith has 12. Porter has 13. Two of the guys we talked about earlier. Both doing their thing in different manners. Harvey steps call. Timmy Higgins calling steps on Boo Harvey. Time out on the court, 3.18 to go. First half, we're tied at 32, and we'll be back. Tillman down the baseline. Sam Jefferson in for Georgetown for the first time. And John's in trapping of their own now out of a 1-3-1 zone alignment. Now watch the diagonal. Smith for three. Rebound, Marco Baldi. Baldi has helped him on the board. He has. He's played well the last couple of games. Jones goes glass for two. And the Johnnies will come back with the one-three-one one trap again. Now they're going X. Okay, that means sit back. Two-three. Georgetown reads. You see three fingers held up by Dwayne Bryant. That means motion into a one-three-one one set. They'll try to take the a shape that the two-three isn't and get into the gaps. Thompson directly traffic from the sideline over here. Smith getting instruction. Shot clock is down to 12 seconds. Here's Smith. Eight. Bryant. Six. Tillman. Rebound Brock. Georgetown getting only one shot. Harvey knocked away by Smith. Tillman Jones fires. Out of bounds, Hoyas basketball. That was a good shot by Shelton, but it probably came a little quicker than Carnesecca wanted it because they had a chance maybe two in the ball to get it to four, which would be big psychologically, and get it inside. Alander Lewis in the game for St. John's. He replaces Matt Frost. Lewis, a sophomore from Albany, New York. Even on the boards thus far, nine apiece. St. John's by two, coming up on a minute 30 to go in this first half. The zone helps 
St. John's defensive rebound a little bit, Bruce, because it keeps the big guys closer to the basket. When you play man-to-man -man against the Hoyas with those four guard looks, they spread you out and they get you, get you inverted a lot and get your big guys out away from the, from the glass. Shot clock down to 10 again. Loose ball and a held ball. This time the arrow points to the Hoyas. New 45. I talked earlier about St. John's needing to get contributions from Marco Baldi. They don't need to necessarily be points. He has helped them on the glass. He's done a good job on the defensive board and a good job defensively. And they've gotten good contributions out of Sharina in this little stretch right here. Coming up in a minute to go on the first half of play. The Hoyas down by two. Their biggest lead of the first half was eight. Tillman. Nowhere to go. Back to Charles Smith. Georgetown's not getting any easy shots. They were earlier when they ran. Go with the defense. Jefferson knocked around. Picked off by Charles Smith. Playing piggyback with Serena. And Serena is called for a foul. <laughs> and Charles still dribbling the ball on Serena's head. Well, Louie didn't like that, but I really think Tom framed the official. He was right there. And he was trying to give him a chance to get untangled. And then when they couldn't get untangled, I think when you see it here, when Steve moved up a little bit with that left arm, see Steve saying, hey, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> and Carter Secchi tried to get the body English to, to break it off. <laughs> oh, he wasn't happy with the call, was he? He's the sixth man. Boy, is now clocks off. I think they'll try to, try to go for the last one. Final second to the first half of play. St. John's 34, Georgetown 32. Second meeting of the year between the two teams. St. John's won the first by seven. Now watch this. You see Smith slide down one side and Tillman the other. He'll bring Smith through. Watch it here. Nice hands by Harvey. Then Porter reacts very well to it. The two San Jacinto teammates. Good hustle back by the Hoyas, but the foul as Porter goes to the, to the hole, and he's got a bunch now as well as Charles Smith. Porter with 20 in the game, well over his season average. Remember the first meeting between these two teams, he had 21, and he does again. St. John's by 10. They're shooting 59% from the field in the second half. Georgetown only 28%. That's been obviously a big factor. Isolate for McDonald. McDonald loses it. Here's Porter again, trying to win the battle. He's pushed, and he is fouled. And it is before the shot, one and one for Michael Porter and St. John's in a situation where they almost gave back some of that lead and they did two big things on defense to turn it back around. Well, you asked me why Louis takes the timeout. Sure, he needs to get press organization and he reminds them of that, but the big thing is they had defended so well in the second half and then they got a little soft right in there. And they came off that timeout and they paid attention to the old coach. As you see him, look at the competitive instincts in this guy at 63 or 64 years old. Absolutely marvelous. Well, he's 63, but he says, I still feel good. Well, I'm he, ready to talk about anything with the word orange. And he's so competitive. I mean, he, he, he just has such competitive juices. This is a St. John team that was much maligned recently. They've won only one of their last six, and they've been blown out three or four times in that streak. Who maligned them? Well, everybody in New York. Oh. You mean people with pens in their hand? No, <laughs> not just people with pens in their hand, everyone. It's a fun thing to do when a team is down. A minute 40 left in the game. That's, Charles Smith goes to the line. That's called the kick me while I'm down syndrome. Sure, right? it happens all the time in the city. The camp driver today told me, he said, I don't know about Carnesec. Do you think that happens only in New York or everywhere? No, I think it happens in a lot of places, but it's amplified here because there's seven million of you because there are a lot of kids <laughs> <laughs> all right smith with big free throws smith hits the first charles smith in the game with 24 points 76 percent free throw shooter oh has cut it to nine a minute 40 to play i don't know somebody missed an assignment Baldy to Brush. Bring it out, Matty. Get rid of it. Oh, good steal. A good steal by Smith. Here's Bryant. Three on one. Bryant puts it up and in. No basket. Fallon Harvey before. Now with a minute 28 to go, it's free throw shooting time. Followed by 
Bo Harvey. That's his second person. Watch it here. John, of course, that little exchange, he wanted the three. Oh, I think the shot came before he was in his motion up. Dwayne Bryant. Bryant calmly nails the first, a 54% free throw shooter. The Hoyas coming back within eight now. Interestingly, the Hoyas shoot, what, under 60 for the season? That's right. And yet they don't seem to miss many in crunch time, do they? That's where it matters. A minute 28 to play. A lot of time if you're Georgetown. Rebound Jones. And Georgetown a little slow getting into their defense that time. Porter to Brust. That's got to get rid of it before the trap comes. Holding too long. Jones wide open, and he is fouled underneath a good dish by Brust. And you, Jones will go to the line for two. You see Louie on the sideline. He's yelling at Maddie, get rid of it before they double team. Maddie being a competitor, too, like his coach, he wants to hold it so that one of two things happen. Either he can bust through that trap just like that and feed underneath, or he can get fouled. But you don't want people to get fouled in this situation. You want the ball alive and ahead of the double team. And you want the clock moving. And it's not moving much right now. 1.17 to go. Redmen by eight. Shelton Jones at the line. 19 points in the game. He's front rimmed his last two. He needs to bend his knees a little more. He did. It's good. You can almost tell when you've seen a foul shooter shoot enough. If you're a young player, when you front rim a jump shot or a foul shot, you need to extend your knee bend. Six for nine from the line for Jones. Got that off right side. 67-58, St. John, the minute 14 to play. Defend the three. Smith for three. Rebounded underneath. Frost loses it out of bounds. Tillman hit the floor hard, and Georgetown will keep the ball. Frost into the crowd for about the sixth time in this game. Mark Tillman, tough. Not a lot of size, but very effective on the offensive board. Smith missing again for three. Porter way up to that four. And Tillman had position. He was inside him, and Porter just rode over. Porter to Brust. Jones wide open. Brust takes it himself. Rejected beautifully by Jaron Jackson. Boyers need the bucket here. Louie not happy. Didn't really want the shot. Smith missed it. Rebounded underneath by Bryant. He puts it in. Georgetown has only one timeout left. They're not going to use it now. We'll with 39 it. seconds to go, They'll down save seven. It as long as they can. Foul Tillman. And there's the foul, and it'll be one and one at the other end of the court. Bruce Louie not real happy with Matty Brust on the last possession when Matty tried to take it to the glass. He didn't really, I mean, Louie, they had him spread out. Louie would rather have possession of the ball. John working a little timeout on the sideline over there. So Michael Porter goes to the line for one and one. St. John's up by seven with 35 ticks remaining. How many points does this young man have now? Well, Porter has 22. Back rim. Misses it. Here comes Georgetown with 33 seconds, down seven. And a kick ball. The Hoyas will keep possession with 30 seconds remaining. Here's that Porter board. Oh, wow. Tillman had done a good job, had inside position. Porter, without fouling him, just rode up over everybody. Smith backing in. Double pump. Rims the hoop. Harvey comes down with the rebound. Taken away by Jaron Jackson for three. Oh, smart move by Jackson. He found the three, and then Tillman found the three. The Hoyas keep the ball alive somehow. But the clock is running down with eight seconds to play. Jackson for three. He hits it, and the Hoyas use the timeout with five seconds to play. St. John's by four. You think they don't play hard? I mean, they kept that ball alive. It was like a rugby scrum, and the Johnnies are an aggressive, tough defensive rebounding team. You know, if you're watching college basketball, I don't think the Hoyas can get it done now. They're out of timeouts. If they had a timeout. Maybe they could still get it done. I've seen it done in five seconds, but not without a timeout. Georgetown has missed their last five three-point attempts. Three or four scooped the hoop, but they kept getting the rebound. They kept putting it up. They kept working. Finally, they get one. Five seconds to go. They're out of timeouts. 
but you never know. The thing that impressed me in that little flurry in addition to the to the quick aggressive play by Georgetown on the offensive board and St. John's hanging in there was the cleverness and the smartness of of Jaron Jackson to get a loose ball and step back of the three point line and take it under pressure. All right St. John's you got to get it in here and you've won it. Russ to Jones and he is fouled one second goes off the clock. Jones is fouled by Jackson and Jones will go to the line for one and one. Now the key here now though that even if Shelton misses and the Hoyas go the length and score they have no way to stop the clock. They have no way to stop the clock. And that's why Louis is putting his people back and he will tell them if Georgetown scores get the ball very quickly and just step out of bounds and you do not need to inbound the basketball. So Shelton Jones at the line this would be a big win for the Redmen who are six and six going into this game the highest seven and six St. John's wins they would move into sole possession of fourth place in the Big East. Jones hits the first and very big overall gets them to the 16 win mark their final three games are on the road but it's another quality win over a right. top 25 type type team they've beaten UC 